Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. If you are fortunate enough to have clicked on this video, I've got some absolute gold to give away to you today. This is gonna be a theory video. I'm not gonna be making anything in this video. I'm gonna be showing you what I came up with and how to apply it, but I'm not actually gonna be creating anything today. I've been working very, very hard to make the best AI writing tool on the market. If you want to give it a go today, please check out harborseo.ai. We currently have a monthly half price offer. Just use the code half price. So I came up with this new concept. The reason being is APIs and affiliate networks take ages to respond to you. What does that mean? It means that in order to use Walmart's official API, it takes a week to get accepted, okay? And I was sick of looking at third-party APIs. So what I have done is I've conceptualized a whole new thing that I think people will be very, very interested in. This thing is called universal scraping. Now, this is actually something that we uh, used or something that I kind of learned for Harbor, okay? Harbor being my SEO, my AI SEO SaaS tool that you can find on Harbor SEO. AI. Um, yeah, it, we have a half price offer right now, half price for the monthly. Feel free to check it out, guys. This is not an advert for Harbor, this video, but I just wanted to quickly mention that. So universal scraping is something that I had to actually figure out for Harbor because um, Harbor requires us to take websites that are on WordPress, on Shopify, on Wix, on Webflow, on all these different CMSs and scrape them for images and things like that. So I've actually learned about universal scraping already. This is slightly different, and this is something that I should have done in Harbor originally, but I never actually did. So this is universal scraping into a database, okay? Now this is, a, I'm smiling because if you know and can understand what I'm talking about right now, this is insane, okay? Because you can universally scrape anything into a database you can have as many json objects inside a chat gpt 40 mini prompt as you want okay what the hell does that mean hamish what the hell are you talking about it means that you can say to chat gpt i want you to scrape this page for images uh specifications uh price uh, I don't know, um, knowledge, description, literally anything that you can think of. But the really cool thing is you don't even have to think of it because you can actually use something like Cursor or C-Line, which I've been using more recently, uh, C-Line um, GitHub. It's this one here, C-Line. It used to be called Claude Dev. This is, I'll have a video on this probably tomorrow or something, but it's very, very interesting and it can... I would say it's better than Cursor for getting the final product, but Cursor is better for getting to something more quickly. Like if you just wanna have like an MVP or whatever, I would say Cursor's better. If you wanna have a finished product, I would say C-Line is actually better. How does this actually work? If you go on ChatGBT, right? Uh, this is kind of complicated to explain how this actually works. Um, write me a prompt using ChatGBT 4.0 Mini to scrape a web, as uh, ChatGPT 4.0 JSON mode, to scrape a web page using Python and Gina uh, to extract um, as much, as many JSON objects as possible from that page. And then I'm gonna say, look up relevant documentation before starting. And then I'm gonna just press this button here and I'm going to press enter. What this is going to do is it's going to read Gina's documentation and ChatGPT's documentation. Now let's talk a little bit about Gina. Gina is something that I've mentioned a few times on this channel. I absolutely freaking love this AI tool. It's probably the most important AI tool in existence, okay? What it does is for an extremely, extremely low price of free, if you want it to be free, um, it will. What it does is it turns any web page into LLM readable text. What, is, what the hell does that mean? 
if you go to, let's go to twomen.it slash collections slash kit on, right? And then right click inspect. This is normally what you have to scrape. You have to scrape all of this information. And there are literally, if I just, I'll show you, if I right click here and press um, copy, copy element, and then open up uh, Visual Studio Code. If I paste this, this has 17,000 lines, okay? No LLM in existence, as far as I know, is gonna be able to take 17,000 lines of information and extract what you're looking for, which in this case are images, right? So let's just do CDN here. CDN is how Shopify uh, denote, denotes um, images. But the issue is, this is how Shopify does it. This is not how WordPress does it, okay? And you can see there are a load of CDN things here that are not even relevant. Okay, here we go. So that was an image, you can see, because it says files. Um, let me just go down. So this, if I'm not mistaken, should be an image. No, it's not. Let me just find an example here. So look, these are links, and then somewhere in this, you know, giant mess of whatever, there are also image links, okay? So what Gina does instead is if I go back here, and I just put this link here and I press get response. Oh, sorry, wrong one, because I don't have tokens left there. Get response. What this is gonna do is it's gonna take that, that 17,000 lines of text or, or whatever and turn it into 2,650 lines of text, all right? So it's a fifth, no, more. It's uh, whatever maths is shorter than the other one. And if you actually look, you can see these are all links, okay, which is much more readable. Uh, th these are a bit irrelevant, but that's fine. And then if I do Control F CDN, you'll see that we can much more easily get to images, right? That, that took me a minute instead of, no, it took me a few seconds to get to the images instead of before I couldn't even find an image, right? So if you're following me so far, good, because I'm about to show you something really cool. But if we just go to Claude, this is an example, okay? of what we can do. And we say, please um, give me all of the image links from this uh, extract. What it's gonna do is it's gonna find the images. There we go. One, two, three, four, five. This is called LLM scraping, okay? It's completely different to normal scraping. With normal scraping, what you have to do is you have to try and work out a way to find images when they have different names using code. It's basically impossible, okay? It's not impossible, but to have a universal scraper is extremely difficult. Now, I promise you, I am going somewhere with this, guys, so just keep watching. So we'll go to ChatGPT here, and we'll say, give me a JSON object of, um, and then we'll say, images, um, description, um, intern uh, links, internal links uh, from this text. And then we'll just do this. And then we'll paste the text and press enter. Now that might be too long even for ChatGPT. No, it doesn't look like this. Okay, so look, now what's happening is we're getting a JSON response of the same thing, okay? So if you're smart, you can maybe start to think what we can do here. I can say to this now, please give me 20 more objects in JSON that would be good to extract from this page. So price range, currency, min price, product types, okay? You understand what I'm showing you, right? Available sizes, colors. Now this is from a collection page. So if you think of, if you think of it from the perspective of being able to do this on a product page, for example, that's when it starts to get really, really interesting. So shipping information even, sales details, brand information. I mean, look at that, it even says brand info. Name, Kiton, origin, Italy, founder, Ciro Paone. Date established, 1968, description. Think about what this actually is. This is information that you can use to write an article, right? Or to create a page. Because what we've been doing recently is creating websites like this. This website here, I haven't launched this website yet. It's still very much in alpha. It's not fully there yet, okay? It was a lot better until I made a few changes trying to get it to show images and it completely 
ruined the website, but that's okay because the important thing is I have a database of 1,000 watchers on MongoDB, uh, Mongo being uh, probably the easiest way to use, to, it's basically the easiest database that I've ever used. It's very, very simple. So if I just go on this Mongo thing here, I've used everything I've shown you in this video to create a database of 1,000 luxury watchers, okay? Inside this MongoDB link in my cloud, I have 1,000 luxury watchers, okay? Which I scraped exactly as I just showed you. So if I go on browse collections here, and then we go down here to uh, Walmart data products. Yeah, I got them from Walmart, don't ask. You don't have to worry about scraping as long as you're doing an affiliate, okay? So obviously I'm not saying go and scrape someone's website, steal all their products and then you know sell their products. As long as you're doing affiliate and you're trying to sell their products for them, it's totally fine. The second that you are scraping people's products and not doing affiliate, that's a problem. As long as you either have a deal with that person or that you're doing an affiliate with them, it's totally fine, okay? Probably, not legal advice. I don't, I, I think it's fine. Um, so let's just have a look at this. We have all of these watches. So we have the watch link to Walmart. And then if I open the structured data, uh, watch details, we have the primary image, okay? We have the pricing. So the watch is 218 uh, USD. Uh, there's the image link. And then we open warranty. There's nothing in there. That's okay. There's nothing here either. Technical specs, it's water resistant. Physical aspects, it's stainless steel, mother of pearl, two-tone two stainless steel. Model info, there's the model info. And then metadata, there's the metadata. So we have all of this interesting information. We even have reviews here, right? I even scraped reviews. Now, uh, this is still a little bit in alpha, the, the review aspect of this. But basically, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create a page like this. Now, again, this hasn't been fully set up, like I said, it was, and it looked beautiful. It looked so good before I tried to make changes to it. I wish I could go back and show you guys. But for now, this is, you just have to believe me. There was also a button here that said buy on Walmart, which had my Walmart affiliate ID inside. This, in my opinion, is how you should make affiliate websites. For me, the days of slaving away writing blog posts, you know, advertising the best watches 2025, that shit's dead, okay? That ship has sailed. Now you can still do that on this website, but you need a base of information. So what I've done is I have universally, I, I now have a universal scraper that will create JSON objects. It will store all of that JSON inside a database. And then once you've got these three things here, the actual creation of the website is, is the easy part. Right. I'm just going to very quickly for people who are watching to the end of the video, I'm going to give you a little piece of gold that I'm not going to leave in the description because I want people to watch till the very end of this video. This is kind of my workflow here, guys. OK, so fill a database using Gina and OpenAI scrapes, include reviews. You can use data for SEO to do SERP checks, find five reviews for whatever, do the same thing, scrape it. By the way, scraping with Gina and OpenAI GPT-4 and Mini is so cheap, it may as well be free, okay? That database of 1,000 watches, it probably cost me less than $3, $4 to make the entire thing. Once you scrape this information, you can use C-Line or Cursor to make a call to your MongoDB. So just before we finish the video, let me just show you what the hell that means, because that might... Um, Confuse a few people. Video. I'm not going to be making anything in this video. Uh, this is the scraper, okay? So it's, it's fairly complex, but it's not that complicated. I made this in about 20 minutes using Claude, okay? So it's really not that complex. You can see all of the, um, all of the JSON is inside the prompt, okay? This is the prompt. This is the JSON. This is a whole new way of doing things, okay? So instead of doing a scrape and storing it as JSON, chat GPT does the scrape and stores it as JSON. I really hope I'm being clear for non-technical people. I really doubt, I doubt that I am, but just one more thing before I go. This is the most important part of this. Make sure that you call your MongoDB so that it can see the formats of everything. So what does that look like? I have a script here called checkdata.py. 
again, Claude made the script for me. If I do Python check data.py, oh, sorry, I need to CD, CD into Walmart scraper. And then, there we go. What this is going to do is it's going to connect to uh, Mongo and it's going to sh show the actual, um, the fuck's the word, like the, the, the format of the database. This is essential because without knowing this, it's not going to be able to create the website easily because it doesn't have the full data structure of the database, okay? So there are a few parts to this, and this is the workflow here. You create a scraper, a scraper.py using Python. Now the really interesting thing is they're now separate. Before what I was doing was I was building the website with APIs at the point of building. So when I did npm run build, that's when it would talk to the APIs. Instead, I build the database first, and then that is the data that I'm drawing from. This is super powerful, guys. When I learned about this, and I, this was something that I just learned in my head kind of thing. I just had this idea while I was playing Counter-Strike with my friend. Um, yeah, th this is so much more powerful because this is your data. You're not paying an external API. You're not relying on an external API, and you're not having to worry about, oh, how do I connect to Amazon API and blah, 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 blah. None of that matters because this is your database, okay? So you have the scraper, you have the check data so that you, you can show the layout to um, cursor or uh, C-line or even Bolt, okay? So all you need to now do is just use a normal prompt, give the URI, the URI is, um, it, it's, uh, how do I explain URI? It's, it's the URL that you connect to uh, your database for. So if I just go on, um, how the fuck here, let's connect. Connect, if I click connect here, hopefully this won't show any data that shouldn't be shown. Yeah, it's here. So the, what this is, the, it's, it's this link here, and all you do is put your username and your password, which, by the way, you make inside uh, Quick Start on the left here. You enter a username, you enter a password, and then you add that to the URI when you press connect like that, compass. So you add it here. So DB username, DB password, that's it. That's literally all you need to do. And then you, the other thing, sorry, that you need to do is you need to tell uh, wh whatever you're using to build this application um, the name of the collection, which is uh, Walmart data, and the name of the uh, whatever this is called, which is products. And then it, all it needs is the structure, the data, like this, okay? So you can actually just copy it like that, and it, it, it's that easy. You're now done. You, you send all of this, okay? So you grab the URI, um, wherever that was. So let's just go back. I'm almost tempted to make a website now, but... <laughs> We've been through that before, guys. I'm not staying here till midnight. So you add your username here, your password here, and then you say, make a website using this data structure and my MongoDB, a static website built on Next.js uh, using this database. Um, you don't need to do anything else, just lay out this data in a nice way. I really want to give you a bit more gold, guys, but I think we're going to leave the video there. I really hope that this was useful for people. I know that this was a little bit more technical than some people would have wanted, but if you can nail this, you can do anything, okay? You don't need to worry about, oh, um, I need to connect to this API and then this API and then this API, and I want to sell, on, I want to sell Amazon products, but they only give me 2%, so, and they don't have this product, so I also want to sell, on Wal sell Walmart's products, and... You know, this random website here is really cool, but they have another affiliate program and another API and blah, 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 blah. None of that is an issue anymore because you can just simply make yourselves a universal scraper, get your affiliate ID, make a website, add a buy on Walmart or buy on whatever button on the product or product page, create the collections, create the, you know, the SEO pages like best watches for under 5,000, um, well, and let me see some categories that I've got, if this even works. It probably won't work yet. It's uh, turned off, that's why. Can we just do CD, CD, Lux, Watch, Club? 
and pure and div. And then, you know, whatever else the categories are. So the way that I did this, by the way, if you're curious, if you want to know how I thought of this is I just used AI again. I just asked Claude, um, give me a breakdown of what SEO pages would work on a watch website. And it said luxury watches, sports watches, classic watches, investment watches, limited edition watches, all that. And then uh, maybe make investment guides, maybe make price range uh, pages, which again, isn't working right now, but I'm not showing you how to make a website. I'm just showing you the concept. All of these are separate URLs. And what does that mean? It means they have separate SEO, okay? So people who search for watches under 5,000, people who search for watches under 1,000. Oh, this does work, what the fuck? Oh, because they're all at zero, that's why. So you can see the whole website is programmatically generated I'm gonna leave the video there, guys. I really hope this was helpful. I know this was a bit of a strange video, but I just wanted to introduce this concept of universal scraping using Gina, OpenAI, storing it in Mongo, and then statically generating a website like this, which is programmatically generated. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you're watching all the way to the end of this video, you're an absolute legend, and I'll see you very, very soon with some more content. Peace out. Watch this video if you've been watching my series about making huge websites using Cursor or Bolt and you want to have an update.